is uh, Sure Barton. I'm an associate professor at the University of Life and Sciences uh, in um, in Oz, uh, south of Oslo. Uh, I'm trained as um, well, in forestry actually, but also in economics. My master was in uh, in uh, forest engineering uh, or forest operations and techniques, while my uh, PhD was more in econometrics applied to the forest sector. I would like to ask you today if you could send a message to the Europeans on the role of forests in achieving a greener economy, what would that be? Well, I think there are several aspects. Uh, I think uh, that the forests and the forest sector in total uh, <clears throat> can contribute uh, in, in several aspects. Uh, maybe the most important uh, thing uh, or contribution uh, is uh, uh, when it comes to carbon. Uh, we all know about the binding of carbon in the forest, but uh, I think even maybe even more uh, important uh, is the so-called substitution effect. That is when we substitute concrete and uh, uh, steel and uh, other building materials uh, with wood. Uh, another one, uh, another important aspect is uh, the use of bioenergy. Uh, uh, the forests uh, provide a lot of uh, bioenergy and the potential is, is quite big. I also think that we can in the future see new, process, uh, new processes, biological processes, processes within say pulp and paper making that uh, we haven't seen yet but are still to come. Uh, finally, uh, Sustainable, sustainable forest management, or uh, ecological services, or multifunctionality. All three are important uh, concepts. Uh, basically, uh, what I think will happen in the future is that we will put more emphasis on the public parts, the public services from, so from uh, forests, uh, than the private goods that we have seen so far. Timber will still be important as an input to, uh, to uh, the pulp and paper industries and, and to lumber production, but we will also see uh, the services coming from uh, uh, especially rec rec the, rec recreation, sorry, the recreation uh, parts uh, uh, and the public health uh, that is derived from this recreation. Uh, it is though quite difficult for the forest owners to develop this part of the economy because it implies that they have to uh, uh, make marketable, non-marketable services. If we're focusing on, on the citizens for a second, what role do you see um, the citizens having in this forest contribution? Like, What can, what can we do as citizens? Well, as citizens, uh, we should be aware that uh, uh, what? Oh, cut. <coughs> well, just, uh, just because because I, I, I wasn't uh, expecting that one. No, no, I was just I was just wondering because you were yeah. talking a lot about um, a lot about the role of the private sector and forest yeah. companies. But if we should bring it to a a more citizen level, okay. If I, if you could talk something about linking the forests and the citizens, what what would that be? Well, I think uh, it's quite obvious that for the future. And the public, uh, the public use of forests for recreational purposes uh, will increase, and that is important, as I said, for for the public health first of all. Uh, <clears throat> we have seen that uh, in agriculture uh, there has been some sort of uh, rehabilitation of of uh, people. Uh, I don't think we will see the same in the forestry, uh, but we will see the public health part. Good. We'll just keep it rolling. And oh, okay. We'll just, we'll just, you, you do yeah, it We'll just cut okay. it all yeah, in the yeah, end because yeah, it's yeah. a lot easier than having I, five I, clips. I understand. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the next thing I would like to ask you is um, this link between forests and tourism is quite obvious. Is what is the link between tourism and a more green economy in a broader aspect than just forests? Well, first of all, I think. We should kill the old saying, saying, saying that uh, the greenest tourist stays at home. 
because then he's not a tourist. That, that's an important point. We have to uh, accept that people are actually tourists. Uh, most of us travel quite a lot. Uh, but what is important is that it matters where you go. Now, if you go together with a few other guys or people uh, or to the Arctic or Antarctic, which is very popular this year, by the way, uh, your footprints, your ecological footprints, will be quite big. Uh, if you, on the other hand, say go into rail, uh, your footprints will be very, very small. So it's a matter of organization, first of all. Uh, the most, the, the biggest problem with, with the tourism uh, is uh, the use of energy. And that has to do with the transport from, from one place to another. Uh, the second one is the emissions coming, coming from this. And in some places also we have some water problems. Not so much in Europe, probably, as in many other parts of the world. But uh, also uh, in the southern Europe, in some places, the water uh, could also be a problem. If you should describe this green economy to someone, um, as as okay, let's let, I'll tell you. as a um, as an expert, as a as an academic, if you should describe the concept of a green economy to European citizens, um, <coughs> how would you describe it? Well, uh, I think. Uh, well, there are many concepts, uh, and there have been many concepts, you know, around, but this green economy has come up than, than during the last years. I think I would put it, as an economist, I'm an economist myself also, uh, it has to do with efficiency, first of all, meaning that uh, uh, given a set of input, how, how much input you have, how much, uh, how much can you get out of that? Or the other way around, uh, if you want to produce a certain amount, how can I do that with as little input as possible? 